Good morning and welcome to worship on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm glad you can join us on Facebook or YouTube or reading through this worship service at your home. Thank you for continuing your support of First English through your gifts and offerings to keep our mission and ministry going through these difficult times. We are celebrating Holy Communion this morning online today. So if you haven't gotten your bread or wine ready yet, uh, you can do that during the opening hymn or during the sermon, whenever you want. Uh, so you can get that ready. We continue with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. Hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 779, Amazing Grace, 779. We continue with our call to worship. 
which is based on Psalm 67. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Favor and bless us, Lord. Let your face shine on us. Reveal your way to all people, your salvation to the world. Let the nations sing your praise, every nation on earth. The world will shout for joy, for you rule the planet with justice. In fairness, you govern the nations and guide the people of earth. Let the nations sing your praise, every nation on earth. The land delivers, delivers its harvest. God, our God has blessed us. O oh God, continue your blessing. May the whole world worship you. Our first reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. The prophet calls upon Israel to do justice in view of God's imminent intervention to save. Righteousness and obedience define who belongs to the Israelite community, not race, nationality, or any other category. Isaiah 56, starting at verse 1, reading verse 1, and then 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew 15, verses 10 to 28. Jesus teaches his disciples that true purity is a matter of the heart rather than outward religious observances. This teaching is tested when a woman considered to be a religious outsider approaches him for help. Matthew 15, starting at verse 10. Jesus called the crowd and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what com comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both fall will fall into a pit. But Peter said, explain this parable to us. Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. His disciples came and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish and her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Yes. Let us pray. God of all peoples, 
Your arms reach out to embrace all who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hearing aids and uh, masks can be a problem sometimes. They get a little tangled up. Time for the children's sermon. Good morning. Good morning. Today I have a stick and a stone. I don't know if you remember this. Well, you may. Re I remember this from when I was a kid. Um, when and your kids now, so maybe they still say it. I don't know what the lingo is these days. But there's an old saying that goes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but they, words will never hurt me. You may have heard of that, maybe? And we say that when people might call us names or say mean things about us. And we know that sticks and stones can hurt us and can hurt others. But while we may sing, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, we know that it, that is not exactly true. Right? Because the words people say do hurt our feelings. And the words we say can hurt others too. In the first part of the Bible story that I read, Jesus says, It is not what you eat or put into your mouth that makes you unclean or wrong. It is what comes out of your mouth that can make you unclean or wrong. Because what comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. So the words that come out of our mouths have the power to hurt or to heal. There's a picture I saw on the internet. It's a picture of a father and son who are walking down the street. And they see this man approaching. And he's kind of kind of looks kind of sad. And he's got, you know, kind of an overcoat on, he's got a hat, and he just looks kind of down. And the father says to his son, Watch this. I'm going to show you my superpower. And the man gets a little closer, and the father says, Hey, great hat. That is a wonderful hat. 
And the man walks away, and you can tell that his, his, his shoulders are back a little bit. There's a big smile on his face. His day was made. Our words, we have the power to hurt or heal. We can choose how our words will be used. Jesus uses his words to help and to heal and not to hurt. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for the superpower of our words. May we always use our words to heal and help and love. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, not 15 seconds ago, I said in the children's sermon that Jesus uses his words to help and to heal. And it is true until the very next story, when a Canaanite woman comes to seek Jesus' help for her daughter. This story presents a challenge because it presents Jesus in a not-so-flattering light. And now scholars and pastors and teachers down through the ages don't like to see Jesus in, in a not-so-flattering light. And some of these scholars and teachers and pastors do not want to accept the idea that the words that come out of Jesus' mouth might hurt instead of heal, might reject instead of welcome. And say so they go with the idea that Jesus is just testing this desperate woman's faith and just teasing playfully when he calls her a dog. I am not so sure. If we look at the rest of Jesus' life and ministry, he gladly tests and challenges the faith of the pompous, the arrogant, the self-righteous, the person of power, lawyers and Pharisees and scribes. But it seems strange that Jesus would test or challenge a desperate mother whose child is tormented by demons. But this doesn't sound like Jesus. So scholars and teachers and pastors try to explain Jesus' behavior by saying he is testing her faith, just joking around when he implies that her and her daughter are dogs. But if we read that story closely, the words test and teasing and joking are not in the story, unless we add them in. The plain reading of the story is this. Jesus speaks and acts somewhat rudely, but also in line with what he sees as his mission, limited to the lost sheep of Israel. And this Canaanite mother, who is not a lost sheep of Israel, responds according to a desperate need that is outside of his limited view. And Jesus calls it great faith. Now, this is after John the Baptist's death, after healing and teaching and feeding 5,000 plus people, after walking on water and calming the storm, after teaching and healing many people at Gennesaret, after tangling with the Pharisees over the finer points of dietary law. And here Jesus withdraws to the cities of Tyre and Sidon. So perhaps this is his summer vacation. He and the disciples book an Airbnb on the Mediterranean Sea. No one likes to work on vacation. And so when a Canaanite woman pleads for Jesus' help, show mercy, Jesus, my daughter is possessed. Jesus ignores her. Maybe because no one likes to work on vacation. The disciples ask him to send her away, which, by the way, is also what they said about those 5,000 plus people gathered in the wilderness. Send them away so they may find something to eat. So you can imagine this chaotic scene in your head. The woman pleading and crying continuously for help. The disciples pleading, send her away, Jesus, send her away. And finally, Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. He doesn't send her away, probably to the disciples' disappointment, but he also does not answer her. He believes his mission is to the lost of Israel, not a lost Canaanite woman. 
but she does not give up. She bows before him. Lord, help me. It is not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. The humiliation continues for this desperate woman. Dogs were not the cute pets we think of today. They were basically tolerated as scavengers hanging around the edges of homes and towns. And then comes her classic comeback. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. The woman is asking for just crumbs, the leftovers. We flash back to the feeding of the 5,000 plus where there are 12 baskets full of leftovers. She's not asking for much, just a crumb or two from Jesus to heal her daughter. And finally, Jesus caves. Woman, great is your faith. Your daughter is healed. So Jesus gets the last word, and it is a gracious word. But those beginning and middle words, yeah, not so gracious. This is a difficult story to read and hear because Jesus seems uncaring to this woman, not treating her or her daughter with compassion, even ignoring her and refusing her because of her heritage. He doesn't sound like Jesus at all until he does at the very end. So why does Jesus act this way? Is he really convinced he is only sent to help the people of Israel? Maybe. Is he physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted over the events of the past few weeks? Probably. Is he tired from the 45-mile walk from Gennesaret to Tyre? Likely. Is he just having a bad, grumpy old man kind of day? Perhaps. What we do know is that in the end, he helps this woman and heals her daughter. His eyes are opened, and he sees the great faith she has in him. And the influence of this Canaanite woman echoes through the rest of his ministry. Because Jesus widens and deepens his welcome for all of God's children, Jew and Gentile, you and me. When we bring our needs and our prayers and our desperation to Jesus, we believe and we know he hears us and holds us close. Thanks be to God.
the prayers of intercession, I will end each petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and your response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, as Jesus welcomed the great faith of the Canaanite woman, help your church find blessing in the faith of people outside our faith community. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Gerald, Pastor Jack and Manwani Parish, and missionary Pastor Alex. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all nations, now divided by competition, contention, and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected kindness, unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for people who do not have enough, for outcasts in our community, and for all who need your healing, especially Joyce, Jim, Dolores, Delbert, Kathy, Janie, Carmen, Mary, Sherry, Dave, Kay, Nicole, Tammy, Melinda, Bonnie, Molly, Lynn, Artemio, Carol, Shelley, Selena, Jordan, Rachel, Eleanor, Ibrahim, and all those with COVID-19. We pray for hospital personnel, medical researchers, doctors and nurses, especially Deb, Holly, Joy, Kara, Taylor, Lily, Olivia, Todd, and Mike. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant us grace to find our life rested and refreshed in you. Strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, now hear the prayers of your people. Your eternal promises are more than we can imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us with them on the great day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things, that we may help all in need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we begin the communion part of our service, um, Dan, I don't know if you noticed, but after I say the body and blood of Christ given for you, I have Dan play question mark. So uh, I think for the people at home who are communing, maybe with larger families, maybe a verse of let us break bread together or whatever. So um, I forgot to warn, warn you about that before the service. So we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. the body of Christ, broken and given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 765, Lord of all hopefulness, hymn number 765. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.